will proceed to our first technical session on Jackson processing and valuation. For this session, we have with us Dr. R. Jagan Mohan, sir, Professor and Head of SPD, Niftem Sanjavul, will be delivering the session of overall scenario of Jackson production and processing in India. He is a session chair for today's session and will be delivering a special address. So, <clears throat> good morning, everybody, and uh, welcome to you all for the wonderful event of uh, Jackfruit Value Chain. And uh, before we go into some of the things, why Jackfruit and what is the value of this Jackfruit? So, where it is being grown and how it is being marketed, all these things will be discussed in this, uh, uh, in this webinar. And uh, before I start, I just want to uh, introduce one another speaker, uh, Dr. K.P. Sudhir, who will be first talking uh, about this uh, jackfruit value chain and the jackfruit uh, processing. So after that, I will uh, present my things because inviting uh, Dr. Sudhir to give a brief about uh, jackfruit value chain and uh, what is the status in Kerala and how many entrepreneurs benefits, benefited from that. And uh, I think uh, Dr. Sudhir has done more than 150 uh, EDI trainings, I hope. Uh, and uh, uh, one of the leading uh, EDI programmer in uh, all, over, all over India. And uh, I invite uh, K.P. Sudhir. So you can uh, introduce uh, K.P. Sudhir in a formal manner. Uh, now I would like to introduce K.P. Sudhir, sir. He did PhD in Agriculture and Engineering from IRI New Delhi and post doctorate from PU uh, Levin, Leuven, Belgium. He is presently heading the Department of Agriculture of the Agri Business Incubator and Central of Excellence in Post Harvest Technology at College of Agriculture, Fisher, KEU. He studied 330 research publications, six textbooks, and several bulletins in the field of post harvest technology. He has recipient of several prestigious fellowships for inter international training, including for the Norman E. Bolton Fel uh, Fellowship by uh, U.S. Department of Agriculture, USA and many more. He has received many awards, including the Best Teacher Award in the uh, Agriculture Higher Education by ICR of Agriculture, Kerala Agriculture University, the Commendation, uh, Commendation Medal, and the Best River Award of the Indian Society of Agriculture Engineering Unity. I welcome you, sir, and thank you for accepting our invitation. The session is over to you. Thank you, Niftam Tanjavur and team, Tanjavur team, for uh, uh, inviting me to this group. I'm so happy to see it has almost crossed more than 500 participants uh, in this morning and the entrepreneurs are curious uh, to see what what we can do with this uh, wonderful fruit and uh, and you know we can say I mean, it's an organic fruit which doesn't require an organic certification that this is the organic fruit because everyone know that uh, because that is the entire cultivation is uh, through uh, organic means and also the Tanjavu team for taking up this uh, webinar on exclusively on this uh, wonder fruit and which is the state fruit of Kerala, uh, uh, jackfruit. So I'm also happy to see my friends, uh, director of Niftam, Lognathan and uh, Jack Mohan and Dr. Siniza and the entire team because I don't, and Dr. Chita, no need to mention each and every one name because all are close to me close to my heart and most of the entrepreneurs also attending the sessions are maybe familiar to me and also uh, uh, happy to see the director of uh, IH, ICR, IHR and uh, his uh, contribution and involvement to help uh, and to support the jackfruit uh, farmers and uh, uh, the uh, initiatives taken by IHR Bangalore to support these farmers and entrepreneurs. And all of us together, whether ICER, CSIR, or Ministry of Food Processing, or State Agriculture Universities, NGOs, banks, all are the to support this ecosystem, entrepreneurial ecosystem in our country. And through central assistance, like through PMFME scheme, many entrepreneurs are coming, many farmers are converting into entrepreneurs. Why we are giving this importance that is already mentioned in the beginning, like because you no, know, we are focusing more towards the microprocessing segment. And in microprocessing segment itself, 
you know majority are in the unorganized sector so converting this unorganized sector into organized sector Niftam Tanjayavur is taking a pivotal role to convert this unorganized sector to uh, to uh, PMO for me webinars and also organizing uh, entrepreneurship development program as Dr. Jack Mohan was mentioning, Kerala Agriculture University through Agri Business Incubation Center also we are organizing many programs on various products and also especially on processing activities of uh, in commodities like jackfruit, banana, pineapple, rice, millets, coconut. So most of these products actually we are uh, conducting training programs and we are giving hands-on training programs on the novel products as well as the traditional products. Now, today's session is on jackfruit and its potential and what all the uh, novel food products products we can made out of jackfruit. So, let me uh, share my slides. So, they sir, can so you please increase your volume? Voice, voice, a little okay. bit. Uh, yeah. Because many are okay. telling that uh, voice is not uh, so loud. Like audible. Okay. Is, it, is it audible now? Is it yeah. audible yeah. now? It is audible. It is better. Yeah. Yes, sir. Okay, it's audible. better only. Okay. <laughs> For us, it is fine, but some people are telling it is very low. Yeah, since beginning that comment is coming. Since uh, this, uh, since beginning that comment is coming in the chat box, you can see. Yeah, yeah, I yeah, think yeah. some of them they have some issues with the uh, audio issues. Okay. So thank you uh, again, once again. So now we will uh, go to the, some of the developments in jackfruit processing and what uh, Kerala Agriculture University through its Agribusiness Incubation Center is actually uh, doing to enhance this uh, uh, entrepreneurship segment in jackfruit processing and also to support the farmers or entrepreneurs who would like to enter into this uh, uh, business. So. The, I'm not going in depth into this origin of vitamins because we all know it's rich in vitamins and minerals and also low glycemic index, for, especially for the raw jackfruit. Okay, and it is underutilized, and the unorganized sector is mainly focusing 95% is unorganized sector, and its production status also already mentioned by our IHR director. So let us go directly into the uh, products or processing sector. What we can do? Okay. Uh, one more. So, organized sector is only 5 percentage, unorganized sector in the jackfruit sector is 95 percentage. And the supply chain in jackfruit also, you can see that two thirds of the products are all jackfruit. Is so, uh, jackfruit is through the middleman, only one third is actually handled by the other groups. So, what we can do in this uh, supply chain and to uh, even the cold chain system, supply chain system that was also mentioned by earlier. Uh, uh, Speakers, and now we will see what are the various products we can make. So we must have seen through training programs and uh, through uh, literature, we can pro pro prepare hundred plus products from jackfruit. But the entrepreneur has to see what are the commercial products we can. How many products as an entrepreneur we can manufacture from one particular industry? So we, as an industry. We need not focus on all these 100 plus products. We need to focus actually what are the products, viable products which we can take up. And uh, if the number of products are less, actually means uh, the number of products should be focused and it should be minimum. And we can increase the number if without much alterations in the process line, if you can bring out, bring one more item into the process line it's well and good otherwise we cannot change uh, the process line should be highly versatile to actually to uh, to take any or uh, to adapt any of any uh, modification in the process line to get take a new products that should be our strategy so with the products when the process and uh, the preparation itself in the production uh, manufacturing line when we are constructing at that time itself we need to prepare a versatile line highly versatile line so that we can incorporate more products into the process line without much alteration so if we are just uh, classifying the group uh, we can just see that uh, sweets and beverages is one group and ready to eat products okay snacks items or ready to cook or ready to eat product then dehydrated products okay again a number of products are there based on the waste utilization also of course dr jagan also will be mentioning in his uh, team lecture so 
this uh, what we can means what are the products under each category because if you are just uh, looking at the sweets and beverages many of the jackfruit clusters in the unorganized sector and also in the organized sector they are making various products like jackfruit sweets ready to serve jackfruit beverages jackfruit squash nectar wine vinegar jackfruit bar or leather okay fire some mix so this uh, products if you classify classic we can classify in the sweets and beverages and the case of snacks KU has developed again a number of products like the jackum, vacuum fried jackfruit which is actually less oil and also by retaining better color and by which we can recycle the more the oil more than 50 times of course i will give the details later and uh, different like jackfruit puppet then ordinary chips also not need not be vacuum fried chips we can make the ordinary jackfruit chips with the flavored chips we will come to that one mixture then ready to uh, eat products okay like uh, ready to uh, eat or ready to cook products like frozen tender jackfruit ready to cook mature jackfruit preserved jackfruit bulbs then retort or can tender jackfruit okay we can enhance the shelf life of jackfruit tender jackfruit based products or canned jackfruit even canned jackfruit we have stored more than two years and retort pouch fact we can store more than one year so it in number of, without preservatives so that is possible and also we have prepared many meat alternatives not only kerala agriculture university in fm tanjavur and i think even uh, bangalore or ihr bangalore many are uh, working in all these uh, products now your advantage is actually without uh, much uh, you know travel those who are interested from any of the states because you no know, incubation center is available in kerala or you know in uh, in tamil nadu or in even uh, uh, bangalore wherever you go it is available only thing is that you should uh, know where to approach for which product that's all okay and we have the dehydrated products like jackfruit flour based on seaweed raw jackfruit mature jackfruit then osmotic dehydrated fruit and we have specially we can maintain we can dehydrate the uh, fruit jackfruit uh, uh, by using vacuum impregnation technology by which we can maintain the texture and also color and we can even impregnate also additional any colored means natural color into this one in means for enhancing the color so n number of products as i mentioned one of the product uh, I mentioned as a vacuum fried snack, which is one of the product which we have standardized in late means in to almost uh, uh, in 2017 onwards. So the jackfruit vacuum fried jackfruit, which you are seeing here now on the slide, this yellow color chips is actually made from ripe jackfruit. Okay, ripe jackfruit. If you are frying in normal frying it will change to dark brown in color. Okay, but that caramelization will never happen when it is done in vacuum frying condition that means at a temperature of 90 degrees centigrade we can fry it instead of frying the normal frying it is happening around 180 to 200 degrees centigrade and with a reduction of 100 degrees centigrade uh, in temperature actually we can reduce the formation of acrylamide which is one of the product actually uh, uh, product formed at high elevated temperature and that can be avoided by using this vacuum fried uh, chips in the process and another area in most of us are working is actually meat alternatives. You can just see one of uh, the products from one of my startup. They have come up with, uh, uh, you know, uh, burger patties, then barbecues, then uh, teriyaki. So uh, many products, they are, many products are being made from this products now. Uh, uh, this uh, jackfruit, you can see butter, jack and curry. So just similar to our meat products, uh, uh, startups are coming with new products. Even uh, even chicken leg piece type uh, shape uh, uh, tender jackfruit uh, uh, is converted by means one of my one of my startups. So many startups are also the agribusiness incubation center is focusing on startups also with new products. And in the beginning itself, we have mentioned about we can produce uh, canned jackfruit. Okay, means the opportunities are means more means hundred plus products we can make but you need to focus what are the products which we can commercially produce one alternative is can canned product okay can as i mentioned can kerala agriculture university standardized the canning process and we we could store it more than two years by canning technology 
okay we have freezing technology freezing tech tender jackfruit can be frozen and we can store it for again many years and for this dehydration or canning okay we we can you we need the small equipments also like for peeling slicing dicing so ku has developed the slicing machines dicing machines so that we can make more uniform size material for dehydrated products so that's also possible and pulpy machines are already available we can make uh, this purees whether it is ripened puree or tender jackfruit uh, curry we can uh, we can keep it under the uh, retort pouch packaging also that also kerala agriculture university has standardized so this is the kerala agriculture university agribusiness incubation center if you have any idea kerala agriculture university is supporting for that idea up to 5 lakhs to 25 lakhs grant also okay so that should be with a new idea any new idea in jackfruit they can come and they can get that grant up to 25 lakhs grant if you are coming with the new idea a new venture especially in jackfruit it not, need not be jackfruit processing any any intervention in jackfruit or any other agriculture crops also but here we are focusing on jackfruit so you are most welcome so ku okay, has already given a grant to two industries based on jackfruit okay jackfruit i will uh, explain those things later so this is how i have mentioned uh, even from the beginning it was mentioned ku has uh, helped almost 200 plus startups okay and we have even given funding also more than 8 crores funding to the startups okay various startups i am not going into in depth though to the uh, those uh, uh, techniques and this is one startup which we have started that is vacuum fried chips as i mentioned that advantage of vacuum frying is already mentioned this is one of the startups actually working working based on the uh, start uh, coconut means uh, uh, our uh, jackfruit based uh, products then uh, uh, they are also making from other products like uh, banana and okra too but the, one of the major product is actually this jackfruit based product and this one uh, as i mentioned the uh, fat uh, uptake oil uptake is less and the oil degradation that means we can we can avoid that one and more than 50 times we can recycle the oil and the frying is happening at uh, less than 90 degrees centigrade that's the main advantage of this one okay and this is another as i mentioned need not be vacuum frying alone because vacuum frying the cost of vacuum frying machine is pretty high so if we can use the uh, ordinary frying plus centrifuging that also we can reduce the oil content and with flavor you can see this startup one of the startup working on this beyond uh, jackfruit dr jackfruit india private limited they are making ordinary jackfruit fry okay jackfruit flakes okay and that is also possible by using uh, a you know standardization he has done by based on the flavor so this is again another startup as i mentioned flavored jackfruit chips he has branded okay, as a kerala chips it's not only for jackfruit for banana also he has standardized and this as i already mentioned the meat alternatives and meat alternative three startups are working on meat alternatives and they are exporting now the meat alternates product from kerala to uh, even europe countries europe and also gulf market okay this again another potential area uh, because wonderful product because world over everyone is working for meat alternatives every means many are shifting from the non vegetarians to vegetarian at that time we can use that potential and you know this is one of the best alternative to meat alternative because you know this is a organic vegetable doesn't require any certification but of course we to mention it as organic we need a certification but everyone will no need to mention because everyone can understand that this product is actually made by organic product then this is another startup working on actually pie some mix ready to uh, uh, cook pie some mix based on jackfruit seed flour and this woman entrepreneur she has made an excellent uh, you know supply chain for this jackfruit seed and uh, i don't know whether she is uh, also attending this session or not so these startups actually exclusively working on jackfruit uh, uh, seed based material jackfruit uh, uh, flesh based material dehydrated matured jackfruit and one other startup is working on you know conversion of this jackfruit waste is very important because you know, we will get usually one third to one fourth maximum of the jackfruit bulb 
that means the remaining is almost the uh, end of sperm end of uh, end of pericarp is all, we cannot say it as a waste we can utilize many products of course we are expecting uh, more products from jagan from specially from the base uh, the by product utilization and how it can be convert into uh, edible cutleries and all okay of course i'll be slightly mentioning but we can convert this waste into organic fertilizer within 7 hours this is one of the uh, startup and effectively working uh, by, for the conversion of this one into the fertilizer and we can make edible plates and cutleries definitely this will be more expected from dr jagan his in his session i am just skipping then value added products as i mentioned a number of products i have already mentioned because you no know, since uh, time short actually i am running uh, because you no know, i have another program that is why i requested for presentation from the uh, initially and all these products definitely uh, the it will be again covered by dr jagan in his uh, uh, main uh, keynote address and that is why i am going just a bit fast but any of these products of course the osmotic dehydrated product the vacuum dehydrated product ready to eat products from this for, uh, jackfruit if you have any questions if you need any practical uh, 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 you know, experience you no know, by on this all machinery slicing dicing dehydration uh, then canning retort pouch packaging all facilities are av available with agri business incubation center of kerala agricultural university so any startups or entrepreneur looking forward for to start any of any such industries which i explained or whether it is on vacuum frying whether it is non thermal uh, or thermal processing retort pouch packaging vacuum impregnation ordinary drying vacuum drying okay, you know low relative humidity drying layer drying or agri business incubation center of kerala agriculture university has got nearly uh, uh, 12 types of dryers okay so they can experience actually which type of drying is required for this is a vacuum impregnation system we have and uh, uh, this is a extrusion technology again another product is actually pastas and uh, cold extrusion and hot extrusion in hot extrusion also we are using jackfruit seed floor raw jackfruit floor and in combination with the millets or in uh, in the combination with the atta or even corn or rice uh, we can make a hot extruded product as let's say kurkure products okay and we can even uh, incorporate the chocolate core inner inner inside core we can fill it by using chocolate that provision is also available with uh, in the uh, hot extrusion process of kerala agriculture university so those who would like to prepare such hot extruded snacks food definitely they can also uh, come to a uh, agri business incubation center and they can use the facility and many other products like ice cream we have the ice cream many uh, ice cream unit then jackfruit bars puppet any uh, cutlets okay even non thermal processing facilities also will avail with agri business incubation center like uh, uh, not high pressure processing pulse electric field pulse light technology cold plasma technology ozone technology all such non thermal processing is also available with agri business incubation center and we are also working on 3d food printed uh, for, for 3d food printing again based on the jackfruit floor based products and uh, you know uh, the extracted products or micro encapsulated product can be incorporated in the jackfruit 3d food printing so that such high end facilities are also available with agri business incubation center so those who are listening to the session if those who are specially from kerala they uh, it, the such facilities are available whatever i have mentioned it is available with agri business incubation center of kerala agriculture university at trishur okay you, you can approach us and i will share our email id and contact number in the chat box okay after the session so uh, you are most welcome to agri business incubation center and we have also written many textbooks on entrepreneurial opportunities in horticulture processing and food processing those who are interested this includes the jackfruit processing also if you are interested of course you can buy through online such books so in uh, short agri business incubation center of kerala agriculture university is facilitating entrepreneurship especially budding entrepreneurship in the sector especially our being the state fruit of kerala uh, kerala we also focus on the start uh, uh, entrepreneurs exclusively based on jackfruit 
and we are also act acting as a catalyst to establish the entrepreneurial ventures especially uh, we are also the state node technical agency for the odop program or pmfme scheme so in that also uh, we are also helping uh, the specialized training programs under the pmfme scheme we are organizing and also to promote our industries so for that is why i even tomorrow we have a, 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 a inauguration of one of the processing industry under the pmfme scheme that is why i am going bit early today that is why i asked for uh, one uh, slot bit early from uh, from nishant tajawur and we also act as a linkage between the entrepreneurs and knowledge partners key investors and banking sector and district industry center so we work very closely with the industries department of kerala uh, uh, kerala then agriculture department of kerala then banking sector we support them and whatever is gaining uh, then subsidy from pm from the scheme the balance fund how they can match convergence of schemes also we uh, assist uh, the supporting and we also help them to prepare, means we help them in preparing the dpr detailed project report also we help them and we help them to refine their ideas also if they have an idea they are they can come and utilize the facilities of agri business incubation center and they can refine their idea and for that also agri business incubation center is helping so in now a way actually we are helping to if they have an idea they can come and utilize the business incubation center and they can go back with their life so that is what we are helping so at agri business incubation center you can note down this is a contact number of agri business incubation center 04872438332 and email id is rabi at kau.in i will uh put it in the chat box also so uh with this uh, i would like to thank the organizers uh, for giving me an opportunity and uh, for sharing what is happening in agri business incubation center of kerala agri especially to focus on the that route thank you thank you nifton tanjavu oh. thank you so much sir for such a valuable knowledge and i hope our participants got encouraged and get some new ideas about this data. so awesome so excellent uh, presentation uh, sudhir i think uh, this is a very big opening for all the people who has uh, been the participation in the uh, webinar and uh, they are uh, now very clear what what are the things they can, they had they can do and uh, how they can do so now i'll just present my uh, things most of the things uh, i think uh, dr sudhir has presented uh, most of the products few things which i want to uh, elaborate from our uh, institute uh i'll just share by uh, screen uh, second sir yeah uh, sir if uh, any participants is having any query regarding sudhir sir stop we can just have otherwise if he is leaving now okay 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 that is good that that's, that's we can uh, complete uh, that uh, yeah yes yeah, sir yes yeah, sir so dear participants anybody is having any query related to the previous session please put it in the chat box hmm. uh, so uh, so there are some questions that asked by the participants so yes the question is that food contains a lot of nutrition like uh, protein and calcium are the nutrients are denatured while processing it or any processing method can be used to prevent it okay i think this such questions can be answered by the nifton team also any specific question to kerala uh, this one you can ask but you know usually you know vitamins actually we will be lost uh, during the thermal processing okay but minerals usually we will make minerals as well as fiber because you no know, tender tender jackfruit especially it is good for fiber and fiber is unaffected by this uh, high temperature processes okay but minerals uh, again the uh, reduction will be less but vitamins of course there will be a reduction in during the processing so that is uh, in general okay. so one more question uh, what about the nutrition in jackfruit vacuum fried yes good question <laughs> as uh, i mentioned the processing temperature there is a reduction in temperature to half you know the normal frying is happening around 180 to 200 degrees centigrade okay and in vacuum frying you know the temperature is reduced to half that means 80 90 to less it will be le less than or equal to 90 degrees centigrade so you can see a reduction of 100 degrees centigrade naturally the vitamins or minerals 
or any nutrients you know thermal uh, thermally affected that will be intact okay that is why it will be better the uh, better nutritious because of this uh, low temperature processing compared to the normal chips and also the formation of acrylamide is negligible in the vacuum frying that is why many are into this business in kerala itself now we have nearly six industries working on vacuum frying so one more question are training provided for working profession or internship or work opportunity yeah we we have uh, with business incubation center we provide the internship also for masters in food technology students okay thank you so much sir, for accepting our information and giving us such a valuable information to everyone thank you now thank you, may thank I, you. Thank you so much uh, now i have introduced our session chair dr r jagan mohan sir professor and head of hcd nifty foundation uh, before starting the session i would like to introduce sir he holds a doctorate degree in food science from tamil nadu agriculture university he is having 34 years of professional experience in teaching and research in gene processing with food science as a background he has been associated in many projects like development of low friction hurler the digama uh, for rice and multi purpose yard drying implement value at chain management in rice pulses and jackfruit he has added 9 9 phd and 27 and many pencils many mtech and msc student and currently guiding three phd students and organizing uh, many national uh, seminars and workshop at various places in india thank you so much for accepting our uh, invitation the session is over to you good morning uh, i think uh, there is a wonderful talk from uh, sudhir and uh, the following uh, all the dignitaries um, the, the directors of uh, two institutes have given a very good uh, inputs on uh, jack food and uh, now there is a going growing uh, awareness uh, we can say that demand that there is growing awareness for the jack food so what is the uh, value and how these jack foods are uh, being different varieties are there and different uh, things are there so each variety whether the same uh, quality can be expected from all the varieties it's a very big question and uh, what are the products that can be identified from each variety that is a, another solution for each of the farmers some of the uh, farmers will be producing the different types of varieties and what to do with that and same products you cannot be uh, given to all the uh, varieties of uh, jack foods so we have identified certain uh, things certain changes happen uh, in each variety and we can give some uh, inputs for uh, different varieties so especially we are working in uh, tamil nadu with the uh, um, uh, palur variety jack fruit variety which are little bit of uh, very different uh, type than compared to the high humid regions like um, kerala and uh, um, karnataka border and uh, many uh, many other uh, points so we we were uh, intervening what is the uh, missing links between each of uh, the products so one of the major uh, things we worked is how much is the loss of jack fruit and how we can convert that into earlier products so almost we can say that uh, near about if uh, there is a 100% production and we are uh, going only for 30% utilization and remaining things are wasted so there is a very huge loss in uh, different stages of uh, uh, harvest from the harvesting to the processing line so we have uh, worked with farmers to how to harvest that uh, jack fruit and what are the steps they have to take for a safer delivery of this jack fruit to a market so another thing is we were analyzing all this different uh, parts of jack fruit what is the use generally we are talking about jack fruits but jack fruit we are using only 30% of the uh, fruits and the remaining thing we are not uh, we, we are not at all using the different uh, things so we want to have an idea what is the quantum that can be used and what is the quantum that can be used as food and non food uses so uh, one of the steps was this one which we analyzed the different uh, parameters or the quality of the fruit so quality of the fruit and functionality of these uh, fruit uh, components so how it can be used for different uh, purposes so if you see this one the fruit of leaf gelation is highest leaf gelation characteristics so uh, that can be used for the meat like products or or uh, non uh, vegetarian meat we can say so some of the uh, major uh, 
components or uh, major components which have a uh, different uh, characteristics has been analyzed so next aspect what the um, people or the farmers are using is whether they can do it in a household level they have to go for a knife and other things so if there is any machine which will be similar to of a tailoring machine so that they can easily unreveal that uh, the, uh, remove the outer skin and then they can use it for different purposes so we designed on uh, one of the machines of, of similarity with this one so we can adjust the height and we can adjust the uh, length of these uh, screws so that it can fixed at one point and this through the uh, <clears throat> through the knife that has been kept on the top it can be removed the uh, outer skin can be slightly removed off so uh, out of that after this what is the problem is that we have found that there are different uh, shapes sizes of uh, jackfruit so for all these things we have to suit this machine so we are uh, trying to do one of the machine which can be suitable for all the types of jackfruits and uh, where we can utilize so after compartmenting all these uh, uh, different uh, uh, parts of the fruits segregating it and then what is the analyzing what are the uh, components next uh, thing is how we have dried it so the only issue when we see for the jackfruit is once it is open or once the outer skin is open it gets degraded very quickly and all other things get very uh, very slimy it becomes a little bit of slimy nature and you, you are not able to handle very quickly if you put it in the freezer also or in the freezer also you cannot have, hold it very long so we want to have a different uh, approach so different approach is that immediately after uh, taking the fruits cutting into different pieces we are using a conveyor dryer so this conveyor dryer is kept at 10 60 to 70 degrees of uh, temperature where the material temperature will be around 50 degrees so that the different compartments different uh, parts of the fruits are dried at different times and then you can easily segregate it while drying itself and then the fruits are different uh, formats are, are made to a flour so these flours are can be stored for a longer time compared to any other products so so uh, the products like uh, jam jellies frying all these things can be done when there is an plenty of fruits and then that uh, manpower number of manpower are there we can use it quickly but when uh, more of fruit and more of things what do you have to do is we, we can we can uh, handle the fruits the the fruits cannot be handled at a time so what we have done is we have made into a different flowers and this flowers having a different functionality as a, as earlier we have explained uh, to you different functionality different compartments and these uh, different flowers can be remixed or we can uh, desired uh, qualities can be improved for example if you want to make a chapati you can uh, you, you can uh, select some of the parts compartments and if you want a high fiber products you can make it and if you want to make a little bit of a higher quality of uh, flour only fruit flour for ice cream mixes and other things for instant mixes and other things so this can be stored and this can be stored for a very long time so we in an ordinary packet with seal we can, i have kept around for 2 years so you imagine that how much it can replace 40% of the wheat for the chapati making and uh, why we want to replace this flour for the chapati making is major thing is that it is reducing the glucose uh, uh, tolerance so that when there is an insulin uh, deficiency this is this is substituting and reducing the diabetic effect and also it is more suitable for weight reduction components because of the high fiber and mainly for the digestible fibers more of a digestible fibers so it is having a very excellent functional qualities and it can be made into a functional foods or nutraceutical foods can be added the outer skin is a major uh, thing where you can take it out and use a use as a pectin extraction so you don't want to throw out you we, we have uh, developed a technology where you are giving a treatment of radio frequency and then extracting the pectin alone so pectin if you use it for a different uh, purpose from the jackfruit itself so that is a uh, very high quality uh, pectin and the product quality is very nice compared to the normal pectins which we are getting from the apple pomace and other things so the major uh, things uh, junk you can use the seeds separately you can use the food separately you can use the uh, the feathery type of a material uh, pseudo fruits or can be used for the fiber uh, enrichment and uh, this one uh, the outer skin can be used for the extraction of the pectin 
to some of the components which we have done it so these are the value added products from uh, for the bakery products for uh, for tart for a uh, jackfruit tart which, which has been developed from my institute and uh, this is waffles so one of the major uh, thing is that we, uh, instead of uh, wheat flour you can use this jackfruit flour making as a waffle and uh, this waffle has a low gluten and more suitable for the uh, celiac disease patients so that is a major uh, thing so these are things which we have done with a lot of uh, uh, after converting into a powder you can make a, a lot of products and the storability of these materials are very good and uh, comparatively we can uh, make as an edible plate also so this is one of the things which we have used for the waffle technology itself has been uh, slightly uh, uh, remodified and given as a edible plate you can use it as a small uh, different plate and you can uh, eat it that too also so ice cream cones can be made i have a video i will send it through our uh, office uh, which is uh, uh, how to make the waffles so that video if you are interested i can play now but uh, i think with the time constraint i'm a little bit reducing my time uh, <clears throat> so these are the people which uh, a lot of people have taken up the technology from our institute especially for the powder and uh, th that is uh, powder quality is excellent compared to the any other uh, wheat flour or uh, mixing with the different uh, products so I, I just reduce my talk and uh, I give the opportunity for other uh, external speakers. Hello. Uh, yeah. Thank you so much, sir, uh, for such a valuable information. Priya? I, yes, ma sir, can you hear me? Yeah. Uh, sir, thank you so much for the, such a valuable information. I hope participants will get some knowledge. Sir, we have some questions. Oh. So, can we take it? Tell me. Uh, sir, one first question is that food seeds are less utilized. Is there any product products such as roasted or and flavored that food seeds and what are the scope? So, uh, can can you type that and because my voice is not uh, clear. So I repeat it. That food seeds are less utilized. Is there any product such as roasted or flavored that food seeds and what are the scope? Jackfruit is minimum used. Yes, sir. Okay, see, that is a, this is a major thing is that seasonal orientation because we have only particular uh, seasons of jackfruit and we think only the jackfruit can be used, but even the immature jackfruits also can be used for the replacing the meat products with high protein uh, components like uh, whatever we have, uh, like uh, ordinary pulses. And pulse powders can be utilized. Um, so I, actually, I am not able to get your uh, voice clearly. So can you hear me? No, you just type it, and I will. I'll just because of some uh, some internet problem here. Okay, so I just type. Can you get the session? Uh, jackfruit seeds are less utilized. Is there any product such as roasted and uh, flavored jackfruit seeds? Yes, we can use it because jackfruit seeds, you, if you are, uh, you cannot use as a whole jackfruit, but you can slice it and make it as a, uh, a, a like additive for the dressing uh, for the ice creams and uh, salted uh, uh, flavored and extruded products. A lot of extruded products are coming up. We can add this uh, sliced uh, jackfruit seeds for that include it and uh, it will be more adding uh, taste and flavor to this one and more because of the starch quality because the starch is in having a high resistance uh, starch which digests very slowly and uh, those people who want to have a little bit of uh, for the control their uh, diabetic and uh, for the cholesterol levels all these things it will be more useful uh, you can uh, you have to slice it roast it and then you can use it so because of uh, the oil content, slight oil content, it may get rancid. Before you are uh, collecting the seeds, the collected seeds should be clearly uh, stored at a very low moisture. It has to be dried to a low moisture and the outer skin has to be removed. The, there is an outer coating uh, skin, uh, seed cover is there. That seed cover has to be removed and then you have to make it as a slices like almond slices. A lot of uh, al almond uh, slices are coming. Like that, you can make it as a slice and then you can use it for 
uh, different uh, uh, foods like like in the in the Kellogg's and other things a type of a food uh, flake foods you can include this one and that can be used so it's an uh, alternate if you are making it the powder you can use it for uh, a different sweetness or thing to reduce the sweetness or to increase the volume of the sweetness for example we have done with the globe john where uh, you uh, you are mixing with the milk and uh, the absorption of the sugar will be little bit lesser whatever the size but when you add with the jackfruit uh, flour the absorption of uh, quantum of absorption of the sugar solution is very high and comparatively it will be looking a little bit larger in the dry weight basis it will be having a uh, profitability for example if you are making around uh, eight uh, globe joints from uh, uh, some certain quantity 50 grams of uh, this one flour you can make uh, around more than that say so 10 or 15 so number of uh, globe joints will be higher so this is a uh, lot of sweet shops are trying to do this and then include this jackfruit uh, flour seed flour for making different products uh, thank you sir so one more question is there yeah. uh, jackfruit seeds are fried and served with rice thali taste somewhat similar to potato fried or not generally it is like a vegetable the fresh jackfruits are used for uh, uh, cooked and uh, given for the vegetables one is tough and uh, very pulpy so both are two varieties of fruit one is tough very pulpy two is very pulpy so both can be processed mm, see this uh, tough one it can be processed very quickly compared to the pulpy one so that's what I, we cannot say that we, when you select that uh, fruit from where it has been whether it is in humid climate or in a dry cl uh, climate say for example if you if you take in uh, Tanjavur or uh, uh, Pudukote or in Pandroti, there are a little bit dry area and the fruits are very tough compared to the fruits from the Kerala and uh, hilly areas. So it is very becomes very pulpy. When you take it out, it becomes like a soggy and you can make more of pulp out of that. And it has to be utilized very quickly. So one more question is here. Uh, can we use jackfruit waste into other useful products or any other thing? Yeah, you can use a jackfruit waste. You can use it uh, if there is a large industries which can uh, able to design some uh, products like uh, pectin extraction. You can make after that pectin extraction, that waste will be there and that can be mixed with some other alternate uh, biodegradable packs like uh, starch and other things. You can make as an edible plate and edible cups you can make. Or you can make it as a non-edible also you can make for the use of uh, tea cups and uh, snack uh, plates. So that is what we have we have designed about 8 inches of a plate which, will, which can withhold the, uh, the moisture condition for more than half an hour. So when you are giving for a street foods, if you see there are a lot of street foods are there. They are using a lot of plastics and uh, papers which are thrown into the drains which is getting obstructed and floods. So instead of uh, at that uh, situation, you can use this one, which will be having an environmental friendly. And this also is being eaten by the animals, which are which is not harmful for the animals and it can be thrown away. So that is another alternate which we can do. And we have done with one uh, one of the plates and uh, cups we have designed and uh, taken it out. You can uh, uh, get the technology from us for this. Thank you so much, sir, for giving us the time and such a valuable knowledge to us. Now we are proceeding to our next technical talk on the market potential of jack for jackfruit value added products. For this session, we have with us Mr. Suresh Paul Anthony, State Professor, Marketing, IMCC. I would like to introduce uh, quickly introduce to you, sir. He is a fellow in the Indian Institute of Management, Lucknow. He has 14 years of hands-on customer interface experience gathered in the automotive, financial services, direct selling, and many more across business and uh, consumer market. Following a mid career shift to Carmichael in 1999, his areas of research are marketing demographics and consumer vulnerability. He has headed various activities like executive education and consultant, technical education and quality improvement programs, acceleration and program review, branding and campus relocation. I welcome you, sir, and thank you for accepting our information. Uh, invitation, the session is over to you, sir. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. A very good morning. I'll just right. take 20 minutes. I see there are lots of participants. Uh, I hope I would be able to give you some idea. Uh, the topic given to me. Uh, can you share my slide, please? Yes, sir. Yeah. 
market potential for jackfruit value added products yes so that's the uh, that's the topic in the next 20 minutes i hope you will be able to get some idea about uh, the market potential right uh, it'll be difficult for me to make an estimate right here and now because the context would vary in different parts of the country the market potential would be different but what i would like to uh, discuss today is the approach to determining market potential all right uh, next slide please who doesn't love uh, you know uh, jackfruit uh, even elephants love jackfruit and human beings consider jackfruit as one of uh, probably the most delicious fruits available now the first question i have is why do we need value add you see uh, uh, something like 2 plus million metric tons of jackfruit is produced in india alone uh, probably my figure is a little outdated uh, i'm guessing it should be about 2.5 uh, million metric ton of jackfruit being produced in uh, some of these states which are major producers orissa Kerala, West Bengal, and so on. I hail from Kerala. Uh, and, and Tamil Nadu is where we are currently in. And I can see the, uh, the Bandruti variety and others, which are considered to be very delicious. The first question is, why value add? Would anybody uh, like to uh, chip in quickly? Why are we discussing value add in the first place? Hello? A any Hello? participants can interact or uh, give the message? Why? Why value add? Or you can put it on the chat box. Why value add? Why value add? I hope you I hope we understand. Yeah, in increasing the shelf life. Okay, so that's the truth. Right. The yeah. truth be told that here is a product, uh, uh, you know, as a commodity, a jackfruit as a commodity is perishable. And given the uh, short, a short shelf life and the lack of a cold chain across the country, right, we have a problem of uh, maximizing the value uh, from the jackfruit alone and therefore the value add becomes very very important right you, you add value to uh, to mitigate to mitigate the risks of uh, uh, you know the, the perishability right and that's the idea and, and as one of you have rightfully said a huge quantity of the jackfruit goes waste right and we would like to maximize the benefit and therefore uh, you know, value-add products which will enhance the shelf life becomes very important, right? We are all on the same page on that. Thank you so much. The next, uh, the next, uh, the next slide, please. Yes, and also to get more price. Yeah, I think we we, we should uh, we remind ourselves often that as long as it is a commodity, the price charge will be only that of a commodity, a salt or a you know water and so on. The moment you add a value and add a brand name to it, right, the value add has increased and the margins that you will be able to get would also increase exponentially. When I did a little, uh, you, you know, research, I found that there were several such value added products currently in the market. OK, I'm sure many of you would be uh, working on these uh, products. The next slide. And from the earlier presentation, the next slide, please. The earlier presentation, I could see that uh, Nutraceuticals is also, uh, you, you know, <clears throat> uh, currently uh, probably some of you are doing. I was just wondering, what are the other things that we could do? Maybe a meat substitute. And what does the future hold for the jackfruit value added products? And that's for all the technology technologists to ponder upon. Uh, how can we convert this? I'm told that every part of the of the tree okay including the wood and uh, you know the fruits the leaves all of them have a use right thank you so much so next slide please so uh, we are discussing market potential i will i will take 5 minutes on this this is the most important slide of that i have now when you have to estimate market potential there are three things that we need to consider the market potential if you see I put it like a, a in a continuum the potential is low and the potential is high what it means is the market potential will be determined by three broad factors. Okay, the first factor is the competitive action. To answer this question, you must ask another question: Who are your competitors? For instance, if we talk about um, 
uh, chips or if you talk about fruit bar or ice creams or whatever, the first question to ask is, who are your competitors? Who, uh, to, with whom are we competing with? It's a very important question to answer. Okay. And then after you need to estimate uh, what kind of marketing effort are they putting in? Are they very quiet competitors? Are they very active? Are they spending a lot of money on R&D? Are they investing a lot of money in marketing communication? Okay. You need to ask those questions because the more the competitive action, more the potential. The potential will start expanding. A lot more people will start buying these value-added products. Today, if you see, like I'm a Trichy, how many are actually aware of the value-added products other than, you know, jackfruit? You know, jackfruit as a commodity. Beyond that, people do not have any idea, do not have any idea about, <clears throat> uh, you know, jackfruit. Uh, and in some parts of the country, you, jackfruit is not even consumed, especially if it is ripe. I know I have some uh, friends from North India who are staying here with me. If it is a ripe fruit, there is a there is a mental block that people do not want to eat a ripe jackfruit because the smell uh, some of them are not able to digest. Okay, so what is the competitive action in terms of uh, you know the other substitutes for these value-added products? You must first uh, identify what are the substitutes, right? Or what can our value-added products substitute current products in the market? Who are the players? Who are these companies marketing them? What is their standing in the market? What is their distribution? How is their product uh, development uh, uh, you know, action? How is their R&D? So please uh, uh, study the competitors, number one. The second one is the consumer behavior. Like I told you, there are some consumers who may not like the, the fruit by itself. But if you add value, if you convert it into, uh, you know, into a value added product, probably they might be more uh, open to consuming it. So we need to understand consumer behavior. Maybe we need to educate them that, all right, jackfruit per se, maybe uh, may not be to your taste, but then the value added products could actually enhance your life. Okay. Where that, uh, you know, uh, for some of them, if the smell is uh, not very palatable, the value added products take away that, that kind of, uh, uh, you know, difficulty in consuming. Right. So simultaneously, we need to work on how do we influence our consumers? How do we bring in more consumers into the bandwagon? Right. So that is the second task for us when we are estimating market potential. And lastly, the most important one that we need to uh, you know, understand is our own marketing efforts. How much effort are we putting in in <clears throat> expanding the market, in making consumers understand that these have health benefits or, for instance, it handles inflammation much better than, uh, uh, you know, what other products are available. OK, so the market potential, let me be very clear, is not something which is standardly available. Uh, the market potential is a function of your competitive action, the consumer behavior. And finally, what efforts are you going to put in uh, into this effort of expanding the market? Would you have any questions here? Would you have any question? Participants, yeah. if any question you have, you can write on the chat box. Mm. You can put it in the chat box, please. Hello. Uh, so I think more people are like typing the question. You need to wait for two minutes. Uh, yes, sir. What caused vomiting in some com uh, consumers? Oh, yeah, that's that's the reason I said that uh, raw jackfruit, especially the 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 uh, what is that? Uh, the ripe ones. Some people have a problem. How to read competitors R&D and marketing? Uh, that's a question from Ramesh. OK, and the uh, other one by marketing efforts. There are two questions I will address them. The yes. first one is uh, how do you read competitors? How do you read competitors? Their R&D is very difficult to read because that's very internal. That's very secretive. Right. That is to address the uh, uh, the question from Mr. Ramesh. Right. But then you can you can definitely marketing. That was Richard. You can definitely read their marketing. OK. What marketing efforts are they putting in the market? You know, who are their dealers? How many uh, distributors do they have? 
how many salesmen do they have you can estimate that and when i and when i uh, uh, refer to marketing efforts uh, that is to dr sunila i am not referring to only advertisements okay marketing efforts is not just advertising it could be word of mouth it could be identifying who your current customers are are they willing to recommend your uh, product to uh, <clears throat> to somebody else okay to other friends and so on so marketing effort is not necessarily advertising it can be bottoms up using your existing customers so i hope i've answered your question yeah yes sir so one more question how to play safe against strong competitors in market sorry sorry can you repeat that please how to play safe against strong competitors in market how to play safe yes sir how to play safe oh please please you cannot play safe uh, you have to meet it either head on okay or Uh, probably if you are if they are very strong you cannot meet them head on you will have to find a niche uh, i don't know if i have explained myself uh, very very well uh, vinod singh patil right you yeah. cannot meet strong competitors head on right so the only way to meet them is by coming out with some niche products which they are not making if they are very strong either in terms of distribution muscle or in terms of field force right the only way you can handle them is coming out with a product which they are not doing maybe you can bring in a point of difference in your product which they are not able to make okay uh, maybe these strong competitors are national brands right where the shelf life could be you know shorter they might be adding more preservatives your my your product could be more fresh right so you have to see how do i find some niche areas in order to get in and it may not be a good idea to fight them head to head <clears throat> is that fine yes sir yes so one more question yeah how do we market the final product and what is the actual market see as i said uh, reena siral the actual market size will depend on all of these things will depend on how how much your consumers are educated about the benefits of your product right it will also depend on the competitive action you know competitive action is like you are putting in marketing efforts right the others are also putting in marketing efforts the others are also spending money on r and d so all of that will decide how the market will get expanded now you can think of products like uh, for that matter when uh, soap was introduced in the country what was the market potential the potential was so very small not many people in this country use soap i hope you understand what i'm saying yeah. right but how did today how is it that today almost everyone in this country uses either a soap some 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 form of a soap it is because of lot of competitors talking about their products talking about the benefits of soaps and therefore today you see the market potential has has blown you know to uh, you know a great proportions that almost everybody today is using a soap right then the question is when everybody is using your jackfruit value added products right is everybody using your jackfruit value added products hello yes sir i am sure not i am sure not i am sure that not everybody is using your uh, value added products can you move to the uh, next to next slide please i will discuss this aspect the next one the next one the next 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 slide the next slide yeah just just keep shifting the next slide <clears throat> next slide yeah just stay here okay so uh, your existing products so if you see on the x axis we have products so products that you currently have products that you could have in the future potential ones on the y axis you have markets markets we are referring to uh, markets we are referring to a collection of buyers okay you can start your starting point will be market penetration my existing products my existing customers how do i increase the usage of my jackfruit value added products if they are using only flour is there any way i can make them use the other uh, you know the other value added products okay so that is the uh, you know that is the first challenge that we have if they are using flour only once a week okay like i know there is that jack uh, 365 flour right if they are using it only once a week or twice a week can i now make them use daily okay so that's the first task my existing customers 
right? My existing products, how can I increase the usage of my product? The second thing that you would want to do when you have exhausted all the opportunities there, the next thing that you would want to do is to find new customers. That's a little more difficult. Your existing customers are already with you. They are already, uh, they are already using your products. How can I make them increase the usage? First question. Second question is, having exhausted all those opportunities, shall I move into new geographies? Shall I find new customers in different markets? I exhaust all those, then I can think of how do I come out with new products in my existing uh, customers, to my existing customers, right? So these are the ways by which you can increase your, uh, your market uh, share, you can increase your revenues, and your potential will simultaneously keep growing. I think I will stop here and take questions. <clears throat> uh, yes, sir. One more question is there. How to find a company from abroad that buy a value-added product like meat products? Is there any particular website that I can directly export? Oh, I wouldn't know of a, of a website, but I understand that some of the uh, uh, countries where the meat consumption is very high, people are realizing that they need to reduce their meat, meat, uh, their meat consumption. This is what I read, okay, like for uh, some of the Western countries where the wheat, uh, uh, meat consumption is very high. And they're looking for something uh, that can substitute it, uh, you know, which is also very healthy, right? So please look into those markets and see how we can, uh, you know, um, uh, market it over there. But I, I'm not, uh, I, I'm not sure if I know a website. Yeah. Oh, so yeah. one more question. What is the unique selling point of jackfruit? What is the unique selling? Point of jackfruit. What is the unique selling point? I think you know that better than I. Uh, like whatever I have done, uh, a little research on this, I figure out that there are health, health benefits. It reduces, uh, you know, inflammation. Jackfruit by itself has a lot of uh, positives. Like in Kerala, in Tamil Nadu, jackfruit is along with, I think, mango considered a very auspicious uh, auspicious fruit, you know, on any weddings and, uh, you know, celebrations, jackfruit is a part of our life. In Kerala, as I told you, you know, uh, jackfruit is very much a part of our life. Uh, even even our elephants love, uh, <laughs> love, love jackfruit. I think we all know the benefits. The only issues are uh, culturally, there are some parts in the country where they, uh, you know, some of their finding maybe the taste not palatable or the smell not palatable. I think smell is an issue for some people. <clears throat> Hello? Uh, yes, sir. <clears throat> All right. Yes, sir. Uh, sir, one more question. Which yeah. one is parallel in your, uh, which one is parallel in your vision market demand or its own marketing efforts it's needed? Sorry, sorry, sorry. So which one is parallel in your vision market demand or our own marketing effort? <clears throat> yeah, good question. Yak Shanda. Uh, okay. It is your market effort that will uh, that will determine the, ma uh, the demand. Simple as that. I hope I've answered that question. It is your marketing effort, not only your marketing effort, the efforts put in by your competitors that will determine uh, that will determine the uh, uh, demand. That that's the lesson for you. So one more question. How can we attract and increase the consumer? How can you attract and increase the consumer? How can you attract the customer? Uh, you have to talk about the very clear benefits of your product, whatever it be. Whatever it, whether it is a jam or a beverage or whatever it is, what is the benefit for the customer? And how does it do whatever it does better than what they are currently doing? For instance, if I'm talking about flour, okay, jackfruit flour, what are they currently uh, uh, consuming? Okay, are they you consuming atta? Are they consuming maida? And in what way your jackfruit flour is better than uh, the current consumption pattern? So we'll have to start from very clear uh, features. Features are attributes. You know what I mean? Like you're saying, it has high potassium content or high, uh, you know, vitamin content or whatever. The next question to answer is, what are the benefits associated with those features? Because it is the benefits, remember always, it is the benefits that the customers are interested in. You may say, ah, it has more vitamin, it has more mineral or whatever. It means nothing to the customer. 
because the customer many a time doesn't understand what it does to them at an individual level. All right. So we have to identify what are the benefits that we can talk to the customers, the storytelling part. Hello? Hi, yes. Sir. Yes, so answer very well. Uh, so you can proceed your presentation. Hello? Yes, sir. So you can proceed your presentation. Sorry? So you can proceed your presentation. Yeah, I thought my 20 minutes is done. All right. <laughs> okay. So actually, there was a lot, a lot of questions from. Uh, thank you, sir, for your presentation. And a lot of questions. There is a asking. Uh, uh, one question was there. Uh, how can I find market abroad to meet product, especially in European countries? Yeah, as so, I told you uh, earlier, that was Dijin. The yeah. only way is to. Uh, I would start. Okay, I will put it this way. I would start with finding out where are the countries where the per capita meat consumption is very high. Number one. Okay. Now, what is the uh, what is the kind of behavior in these countries? Are they looking for uh, substitutes? If not, then we have a, a major problem in terms of putting in marketing effort. If that feeling is already there, you know, let's say yoga is there already, or uh, you know what I mean. There are other things that indicate to us that there is a move towards some of the Eastern values, okay, like vegetarianism or whatever. Then I know that the market is right. And these are the markets I would like to, uh, you know, start with, right? And today with D2C, you don't have to look for distributors. Direct to consumer is the route. I hope I, you understand what I'm saying. Yeah. Today you have Amazon and you have other platforms. You have market aggregators which provide you a platform to market, okay? So you can market anywhere in the world. You don't really need to have a distributor. So you may start with D2C initially, okay? Develop a brand. And then think, how do I, uh, you know, my, maybe export directly or through a distributor and so on. I think that should be the route that you take. Initially, test the market, do direct to consumers. Today, it is possible to do that. And then later on, uh, you can do, uh, uh, you know, you can do it yourself. And of course, there are exporters, there are importers available. Please remember when you do, when you use these routes, the margins will be very low. Okay. You will be assured of profits because they do all the marketing. But remember that the margins are with them. So you need to build your own brand in the long run, even if you are dependent on a uh, on a on a huge exporter, uh, maybe abroad to do this for you. Please remember that you ensure that your brand name is prominently written in your uh, you know exhibited in your product. Yes. Is there any other question? Uh, no, sir. It's like a technical question. Yeah. For Suresh, uh, for uh, uh, Jagan Mohan, sir. Right. Yeah. For you, it is not questions are there. Yeah, I have shared my email ID. I have shared my uh, uh, telephone WhatsApp number. Those of you who want to get in touch with me, I mean, I'm sure you'll have more questions. If you have more questions, you're welcome to call me. Thank you so much, sir, for Thank such you. a nice uh, session. Now we are proceed for the next technical talk, which is on the Jackfruit Processing Insight Experience Sharing. For this session, we have this. Uh, we we have with us Mr. Sairaj Bhun. I would quickly introduce you to sir. He holds a degree in Bachelor's of Law, NLB, from BM uh, Salugar College of Law, uh, Goa. He has won and wears many hats throughout his professional life, and does justice to each new venture with Pitney. He is constantly working with great vigor to make Goa a green state and create a global fo uh, footprint for his company. And now entered the uh, FNB space with his debut project, Pakao Foods. Pakao is the first jackfruit meat brand in the country, and 2021 was a huge milestone year as Pakao Foods became the first India's first startup to be, be backed by all female shark in Shark Tank India. He was awarded as a Young Entrepreneur's Award at Business World Disrupt YEA 2021. Thank you so much for accepting our invitation. The session is over. To you. Good morning, everyone. Nice to be here. Uh, okay, super. Nice to be here. Uh, for me, uh, jackfruit has played a very integral part in my life. Uh, when we started uh, uh, in December 2020, uh, so I, I'm assuming that 90% uh, of the people here of, uh, will be from southern India, like us. And uh, anybody from the southern part of India would have had jackfruit at some point of time in their life. You would know what jackfruit is. Our, 
mothers grandmothers have always been uh, feeding us jackfruit as different things we've eaten jackfruit so i believe that 80 percent of india has eaten jackfruit in some form or the other uh, made me as a sabzi as a, a meat replacement or the seed boiled seed or the fruit um, or pulp there are so many things in so many ways in which we have eaten jackfruit so for me the whole uh, they call it the eureka moment or the change changed moment in life was when i read uh, one article which was by uh, palki sharma upadhyay of first post it was a video article the headline was jackfruit the superfood of the world and uh, that really got me thinking you know because for us uh, for me quite literally jackfruit is grown in my backyard we have a jackfruit tree in our house and uh, and jackfruit almost goes to waste and most of you all also would have experienced that that jackfruit falls down or it or sad jata hai koi leta nahi hai and and it just is wasted it's never and suddenly the world was calling it a superfood and that was something that really made me wonder and take notice and that's when i started researching a little more and that's when i realized that uh, there is something called as mock meat i didn't know what it was before then i realized that there is this whole thing of veganism and there's a big uh, talk of jackfruit all across the world um, so i started going a little deeper into it and as i went deeper and deeper i realized that this is not jackfruit it's a jackpot we all are sitting on something that is so precious has so much of value and uh, we are under utilizing it there's so much potential in india 1.4 million tons of jackfruit is grown every year and uh, 75% of it goes to waste and that's such a that that statistic really made me think you know that itna ban raha hai yahan pe aur we are not utilizing it and and someone had to do something about it so i thought that uh jackfruit is being sold and a lot of people over here on this uh, today in the audience also may be selling jackfruit maybe uh, one minute huh? no voice coming can you can you all hear me Yes, sir. Yes, we can hear you. I yes, think starting from a network issue. You check oh. your network issue, participants. So, why is it okay? Yeah, yeah, we can hear you. A lot of participants are there, and uh, yeah. they are waiting for your mock meet. Uh, yeah, yeah, no. So, yeah. Good. So, uh, so that whole potential of what can be done with jackfruit really came to the fore. Or phone call. And uh, I, I realized that this is something that really needs to be explored. you know and sometimes in life you need to take those risks you know you need to take those jumps uh, where there is a lot of uncertainty and to be honest with you all all around 3 years back uh, there wasn't anyone actually doing anything much about jackfruit in the open market there were people selling in small quantities within their regions here there but jackfruit was never spoken about in a large voice so our whole aim was to make uh, jackfruit very attractive make jackfruit uh, uh, for the lack of a better word and i don't know if it sounds a little uh, crude but uh, we wanted to make jackfruit sexy and uh, i wanted everybody in india to understand and the world to understand that the potential that jackfruit has is humongous it's so much that can be done uh, so then i i started we started uh, developing a few products uh we worked with a few manufacturers to understand what can be done what the people will like to eat how because it's a new market it's something very different and uh, food is something very subjective always realize understand one thing any of you all who want to enter the food market one thing you need to understand and it should be engraved in, on stone is that someone would eat anything any food item you would eat only if it tastes good remember this the only thing that you eat or consume that is not tasty are medicines nothing else in your life you would eat regularly if you don't like the taste so you need to get the taste right if you want to reach maximum people and again taste is very subjective what i like you may not like what someone else like someone else may not like so it was a continuous process for us to understand what is the exact taste what what people want and even today we have not i won't say we figured it out you keep on learning you keep on taking feedback and you keep on improving so the journey started from goa so i am from goa i am an unadulterated goan i like to say that i live in goa we work from goa our headquarters is in goa 
but today we supply to every city in india every pin code to india through our online channels and through our partners uh, we have distribution uh, network in almost seven to eight cities across india and we export to five countries across the world and all of this in around two years and eight months uh, so there is no rocket science to this but it all was uh, one step at a time the first thing was to understand the value of what we have uh, what can be done with it and uh, how we can take it to another level uh, the second thing um, as i was just i just joined uh, while the previous uh, session was going on and i could see a lot of you all asking how do we get the market how do we reach out to people how do we so see there are two things here it's it's easier said than done i know how difficult it is to reach even one client i know how difficult it was to sell my first pack when you make a product you believe it is a great product everyone loves their own product but to get that first client is the toughest thing and it's very difficult and i know how difficult it was for us so it's it's not an easy journey it's a journey there are no correct answers to this no one no one in this world can give you a correct answer we've done this for last two and a half three years we know what it is i've gone through this journey so the only answer that i can give you on that front was how we did it we did it was step by step we tried from one region we tried first in goa we started sampling we started giving it to people people started eating it from there we found partners in another region we started going to different regions then we took the online route um, online route is not very easy people think that a website dal diya i so today i see a lot of more jackfruit companies coming up which is good everyone is welcome to do business no one see the more the i won't even call them competition at this stage at this stage everyone is a competitor so the more people come in the more knowledge and information about jackfruit is being spread because we are in that stage of educating our consumers right now so uh, so there people think it's very simple that you come you make a uh, website uh, you have a uh, instagram page and business will click and people will start buying but doesn't work that way to get traffic onto your website to get people to buy your product you need to spend a lot of money that's called performance marketing that's a different science altogether uh, then google ads facebook ads it's a difficult game it's a game where you need a lot of money the online space and uh, you need to tread that very carefully uh, so we we tried to find uh, the various things uh, like uh, going to hotels going to restaurants going to cafes going directly to people going to housing societies so it's very it's everything has its own journey you need to find step by step you keep moving finding newer markets and doing even international sales uh, there are a lot of uh, leads that come to us directly now because we we developed a model where we had uh, people knew about us we went out marketing so for me if you ask me what i am i am a marketer i am a branding guy so i understand the branding game so only jackfruit would not make great value and great sense to people people have they know jackfruit but why jackfruit you need to make it more enticing for them so if you see a brand wakao the way we brand it the way our social media when if you all are following us on instagram you all should go and follow us on instagram see the different kind of posts that we do the reels that we do how we how we tweak certain things so it's a so in india today if you have to sell something your branding has to be bang on so and and it's not and it's not uh, everybody's cup of tea you know it, it takes uh, different skill parts so we we work with almost four agencies from across india we have uh, various agencies uh, and uh, who do social media who do our pr so you know you have to find the right people to work with you also so that's another thing that's how how brands work and this i'm saying in general uh, whether it's a jackfruit business or it's a mango business or it's a chips business or whatever business branding if you want to build a brand in india it's very difficult now there are two kind of things i know of manufacturers who've tried to build brands and who failed and who now stuck to manufacturing and some of them even supply to us so uh, one thing i'll very frankly and openly tell you all is that i don't manufacture the product so we don't manufacture the product we buy or we get it manufactured from various manufacturers so right now there are a lot of people hearing me also i'm happy to collaborate with any of you all if you all have 
uh, uh, you all have the inclination to manufacture, you all have a great product that you all can do out of jackfruit. I'm happy to work along with you all because see, uh, it takes a lot of time, money, effort to build a brand. And uh, today we are in a position where we've already established a brand. And uh, to reinvent that whole thing and to build a new brand again is difficult. It's absolutely not impossible. Everybody can do it, but uh, it's difficult and it takes a whole new journey. So I'm happy to inter to meet with people and to to interact and see what we can do. And if there are new products that can be introduced, someone wants to manufacture for us a certain thing, I'm happy. So there is a wide scope that I want. To, that's why I want to put this before all of you all right now at the start itself. Uh, so, as we moved, you know, we realized that the one thing that we had to do as a brand was uh, to establish a category. You all will agree with me that this plant-based category is a new category. The mock meat category is a very new category in India. Internationally, it's something that is almost 10 to 15 years old. And uh, uh, in India, it's very, very new. It will take another three to five years. So you need to have patience. And we also have, we, we understand that it's a long shot. It's not an easy game. You know, I always say this, you can get rich overnight only in two ways. One is if you uh, win a lottery. And the second is if you loot a bank. There is no third way of getting rich really fast. So it's a long game. It's, it's a sustained game. So we spend a lot of time, effort, money on educating the consumers. Telling them what exactly uh, jackfruit is, what are the what are the nutritional values of jackfruit, how you can build it, and that's how it works. So India will take its time. So we are also looking at the international market very actively because we see great potential there. Um, so someone's asking, how do you venture? There is no simple answer to it. How do you venture? Matlab kya hota hai? You you have to you have to really really keep trying. You have to be very active on LinkedIn. You have to reach out to a lot of uh, people who are into imports, exports. See, friends, let me be very frank with you all here. I have asked, I've heard some of the questions in the previous session also. When you ask a question like, how do you start a jackfruit entrepreneurship business? It doesn't mean anything. How do I export? Doesn't mean anything. You need to first open Google. You need to first read. You need to first find out. See, it is a two and a half. Before this business, I've done three other ventures. It is almost a 10, 12 year journey that has happened. And throughout that journey, there have been steps where we've learned different things. We've met different people. One thing remember very clearly, net work is net worth. Net work is net worth. Every person you meet can give you great business. So I'll give a simple, simple example. How do we get international business? Get up and go for the Gulf Food Expo in Dubai. Go there. Spend five days there roaming around that entire expo, meeting people, giving cards. I have met more than 1,000 or 2,000 people I have spoken with in five days at the Dubai Expo, Gulf Food Expo. I went mad speaking with people and trying to find this. And from that whole thing, you will get 10 proper leads. And from those 10 leads, if you are lucky, one will convert. So exports is a very long game. It's a slow game. It's a trust game. You have to build that over a period of time. So it's not, not very simple. Ki koi aega kal se aur bolega se bolega ki mujhe I need 100 tons of jackfruit. And you'll say, wow, mere paas hai, aap le lo. It doesn't work that way. There are a lot of things that come across it. So right now, we have we have a requirement of uh, we have a requirement of uh, organic raw jack in retort uh, huge requirement of almost uh, five tons a week so if any of you all can help us with that requirement and uh, join hands with us we are happy to work with you all so you know my point is that this requirement will come now you you all have met me today here you all spend the time of coming here and listening to me so these 500 people today have heard what I'm saying. I've heard this opportunity that I've given you. See, I'm giving you an opportunity. Correct. This is your first opportunity to export. Now, how well you take that opportunity is your, is your choice. I can give you so many opportunities today of telling you keep our products like how we can try finding out a market. We can do this, we can do that. So, you know, it is about being at the right place at the right time and having your ears and your mind always switched on and open. 
to see where that opportunity lies. The most important quality of an entrepreneur is to be alive to opportunities. It is for you to identify which is an opportunity, latch on to it, and then strangle that opportunity till you take the last, last drop of that opportunity. That is where deals happen. That is where business happens. That is how it all happens, you know. So it's not that simple. You have to be at it every day. How many of you have a LinkedIn profile? Let me ask you all that. How many of you all out of this 500 people have a LinkedIn profile? How many of you all are active on LinkedIn? So I'm not, I don't want answers. I'm only asking you all to think. I want to, I want you all to think. How many of you all have actually made that effort of finding out what can be made from Raw Jack? See, me being a, com a, a complete novice to this, I, I actually did not have too much information. I'm not from a food technology background. I'm a lawyer by education. I studied law. I, I have other businesses. My other businesses are completely different from food. I did solar, I did lighting, I did real estate. So I had no food background, if you want to say it. But you know, this I saw an opportunity. I spotted an opportunity and I used that opportunity to my benefit to bring great value to the people. Now, the most important thing here you all need to see is what kind of value you can bring to the consumers. To your people. Never run behind success. Like, Mere ko ye order chahiye, order chahiye. don't run behind those orders. See how you can add value. Look, chase excellence. If you can get an excellent product, or can solve a real problem, that's when success will come chasing you. Now, people reach out to us for exports. Honestly, the five countries that we've exported to, they've all come in as inbound leads inquiries they have reached out to us to inquire whether we can supply them our products so we have not reached out to them so that's what i say when you have a good product when you have something that can add value people will reach out to you so that is very important keep that in mind uh Vijay, what is the time how much time do we have uh, uh 20 minutes but you can take questions no if you are then i'll keep this open for questions now i think that will be better if we can just have an interactive session because I've already told you what I had to say as far as the startup was concerned and what we do. So okay. we can go into specifics and quickly answer a few questions. Okay, so one question is there, how can we manage different varieties of jackfruit to get a standard taste in our product? See, uh, as far as the technicality of the product is concerned, uh, we make, we, we, use, we use the raw jackfruit, the tender jackfruit. So for us, in our case, the quality or the variation of the jackfruit doesn't matter to that extent. But when you are using it, like you're using the ripe jackfruit, then there are different qualities that come. So you need to then brand your or collect or be very clear in what you're doing. One thing you need to be very clear is what your product positioning is. What is the product you're doing? That is very important because if you are confused or you are doing just everything, then the audience will be confused. Your consumer will be confused. So if you are doing one type of jackfruit ka products, stick to that. Make sure your collection is very sorted. You are you're just using those products to do it. So I think in that way, you need to be very clear of what you are making, what product you are using and stick to that. Don't adulterate, don't mix because at the end of the day, your quality is your biggest asset. If you can give sustained quality, same quality throughout, which is good, which your consumers are liking, never try and change it. So th there is this saying, you know, never try and something that is going well, never tinker with it. Never try to change something that is working for you. So it's like that. Okay, sir. One more question. Please talk about the cost effective. These products are costly for the consumers. They are very costly. So right now what is happening is the whole plant-based meat, the mock meat segment is a little more costlier. It is on the higher side. It is not for the mass. I agree with that. And that is because the whole process is costly and uh, we don't have scale. So anything for any product to be uh, affordable or to be cheaper, you need to have scale. So right now we are just building the market for this. Scale has not yet been achieved by us. So as the scale increases, as it becomes more popular, as more people start eating it, um, the, the logistics uh, become more efficient, transportation becomes more efficient, costs reduce on that front. That's when we are going to be competitive and we're going to have better rates. But till then, we're still expensive. I agree with you.
just uh, one more question. Uh, what should be the approach for micro scale entrepreneur? What should be the approach for a micro? Micro scale entrepreneur. Scale entrepreneur. Okay, I'm just yes, reading. Yes. Uh, so always start small. Okay. Uh, the hardest thing in an entrepreneur's life is to start. You need to start. Start somewhere. Start with a vision. कि आपको करना क्या है आपको खुद का ब्रांड करना है आपको किसी ब्रांड को सप्लाई करना है यू वांट टू टेक दिस टू एक्स वाई जी सिटी यू वांट टू एक्सपोर्ट सो वॉट एवर यू वांट टू डू नो फर्स्ट थिंग हैव क्लैरिटी इन योर माइंड वेरी क्लियर कि मेरा प्लान क्या है बिफोर जंपिंग इनटू अ रिवर यू नीड टू फिगर आउट वॉट इज योर एक्सिट योर प्लान राइट ना इफ यू जम्प इन द रिवर जस्ट एमलेसली You don't know whether उधर कहीं कितना डीप है क्या है उधर से मैं निकलूंगा कैसे उधर से मुझे जाना किधर है सो बिफोर दैट यू प्लान कि मुझे करना क्या है सो प्लान एंड स्टार्ट टेक स्मॉल स्टेप्स लुक एट योर जोग्राफी लुक एट योर रीजन मेक अ प्रोडक्ट स्टार्ट सींग टेक टेस्ट फ्रॉम योर पीपल एक्सपांड योर रीजन स्टेप बाय स्टेप स्टार्ट मूविंग गो फ्रॉम योर टाउन टू द नेक्स्ट टाउन देन लार्जर सिटी देन मे बी यू कवर्ड योर स्टेट गो टू द नेक्स्ट स्टेट take small small steps but take certain steps and there are a lot of schemes available to the with the government a lot of investors if you have a great product trust me friends if your product is good and if you have a fire in your belly to uh, build a business or build a good uh, uh, model or a startup you will have people backing you so start don't worry you're good yes sir thank you so much for giving thank us you. the time and thank such a you. valuable information to everyone Thank you, sir. Thank you. Thank you, sir. 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 Thank you, sir